What's going on everybody, Dato Doya here with another Dragon Ball Fighters video, this time focused around some ways to improve your offense in the game. As with most of the other videos on this channel, I'm going to try to keep this very brief and explain to you only the very basic core elements of offense so that you can experiment with different ways to improve it on your own. Let's start by breaking the offense in this game down to three core components. The neutral game, the combo, and then the wake up game. Having a good understanding of each of these subsections of offense is crucial in order to make sure you have the best offensive game possible. So let's take a closer look at each of them individually. Let's start by covering the neutral game. So the neutral game is actually kind of a broad term. It basically encompasses everything on the screen, other than when you're getting comboed, or when you've recently been comboed, and are having to get up off the ground. So naturally, the neutral game is one of the most important, if not the most important aspects of your game. It relates to both offense and defense. So learning this is essential regardless of whether or not you think your offense is fine. But let's look at it in terms of your offensive game. So in order to start your offense, you need to land a hit first, or at least get your opponent into a block string. Of course, in order to do this, you can't be blocking at the same time, which means you're going to have to be smart about when you pick to attack and when you pick to defend. Knowing what tools your characters have available to them are an important part of this step. You should be asking yourself questions like, do my characters have beams that they can use for long-range pokes? What are the range on my character's normals? And do they have effective ways at confusing your opponent in order to open them up for a hit? Examples of this being Goku Super Saiyan and his Kamehameha, for a long-range beam attack to poke, Goku Blue for his instant transmission into his Vanish, and Goku Black with the insane range on some of his normals and his instant transmission attack, which makes opening up the opponent much easier. Knowing what your characters excel at make landing that first hit that much easier. But landing that first hit won't get you much if you don't know how to combo off of it. That brings us into our second step of the offensive game plan, combos. A lot of newcomers to the fighting game genre see combos and think, that's the thing I need to be good. If I can just learn the highest damaging combo my character has, then I'll win every fight guaranteed. While that isn't exactly true, I do understand the mentality behind it, as I'm sure that most of us playing fighting games now started with that same mentality. But there's actually more to combos than just the damage, and we'll cover that now. You see, for every character, there are different combos that you'll want to use in different scenarios. Oftentimes you'll have one combo that's pretty useful in every scenario, and that's what the community calls a bread and butter combo. These don't usually rely on too much meter, and they don't really require any special setups in order to get them going. They're just simple strings that you can fall back on if you either don't have any resources or you're just not sure if you'll be able to land a different type of combo. These are the combos I would recommend learning for your characters first, as they're by far the easiest to practice, and they're much smaller in scope than most other combos. They oftentimes won't require any assist being used or any particular setups, so these are a great place to start when learning a combo. After that though, it might be a good idea to start looking into what your maximum damage output combos could look like. These combos are specifically used for when you really want to kill the opponent. Making sure your opponent loses one of his characters is always worth any amount of meter you have to spend to get that result. So even if the combo doesn't give you great corner carry, or doesn't even end in a hard knockdown, if you think you can get the kill, these combos are your go-to. If you can't pick up the knockout though, then these combos usually aren't worth it as they don't result in a knockdown. What a knockdown does is it forces the opponent onto the ground in which they're put in a state where they have to tech out. Obviously for the opponent that knocked the opponent down, this is a good thing as the opponent getting up only has a limited amount of options. So this is a great chance to open them up for yet another combo. Which brings us into our last subsection of offense, the wake up game. Being good at this step of the offensive game should be enough to carry you through a lot of the early ranks in Dragon Ball Fighters. When new players experience a good wake-up game, it's very easy for them to crack. This is because a good wake-up game involves knowing your opponent's patterns and what they like to do off of the ground. If they like to tech up, the person applying pressure has different ways to cover that option. They can also tech down and delay their wake-up, but while that could cause some setups to miss, there are plenty of other setups to easily get conversions off of that option too. So my number one piece of advice for being good at the wake-up game would be to take constant mental notes of what your opponent chooses to do after you get a hard knockdown. Make sure to condition them to do certain things. If you notice that after a couple of your media attacks they tend to start blocking, you can simply go for a dragon rush into a full combo. If you notice they aren't respecting your media attacks, then you can simply continue to get some combos on them that way. That brings us to the end of this video, and I sincerely hope it succeeded in breaking down the offense in Dragon Ball Fighters at least a little for you. This game can be pretty fast paced, so it can be kind of hard to remind yourself that there is a reason that certain things work and other things don't. If you have any further questions on offense in Dragon Ball Fighters, feel free to ask down in the comment section below. I'll be down there as always. And while you're down there, if you like this video and channel, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And before I end the video, I would once again like to thank my patrons on Patreon. 
You guys help support this channel, and I can't tell you how much I'm thankful for that. I'm Dr. Doya, and I'll see you in the next one.